Welcome, Ashley. And thank you so much for being my first guest of 2024. Yay. Hi, Elsa. Thank you for having me. And yes, I can't believe it's 2024. (laughs) I feel like when we met, it was such divine timing because it was in the beginning of December. And we were talking about, um, well, you were sort of helping us go through your wonderful goal setting worksheet. Uh, And then immediately I was like, this is so topical for January as everybody is (laughs) diving into this hardcore right now. (laughs) Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, Now we'll back it up and I would love to hear, um, we're for you to share, I guess, a little bit about your background and and what you do and how you help people. Oh, yeah. So I am an intuitive life and business coach, and I've been doing that for almost four years now. Before that, I was in the corporate world for about 15 years, um, which was great until it wasn't and had to figure some other things out, but I won't go into that whole backstory yet. Uh, But I really have fallen in love with supporting women and and doing life and business on their terms or or whatever their work is whatever their career is right but really living on their terms and helping women through things like perfectionism and burnout and self-doubt and guiding them into a life that they're living that is more in touch with who they truly are and they're confident about like what it is it's it's really authentic to them because i think when we are connected to ourselves and that's a part of like how I help people is like your relationship with yourself. When we are more connected with ourselves and more in line with who we actually truly are versus what everybody else tells us who we should be or how we should act or whatever. um, That's how we really thrive. That's how we really elevate. And that's where we're most in our power. Um, And I do this for women who are female entrepreneurs or women in corporate or high achievers or other types of leaders um, and just really, who wanted deeper connections with themselves because they know that's what's going to elevate their lives, their relationships, their career. Um, And that's, that's really where we start. So that's who I help. That's what I do. Um, I do that through a variety of different ways, obviously personal development and mindset's part of it. Nervous system healing and regulation is part of that. So some like somatic work brought into that as well as just straight up like strategy and action items and that kind of stuff too. Um, I love that you include the somatic work uh, because that's such a cool release of emotions and like such an interesting way to get really connected to your body. Um, Can you explain maybe just like one or two sentences, whatever, what that is for anybody who may not be familiar with somatic work? Yeah. So from like, so there's a lot of different ways somatic work, right? There's breath work, there's even meditation is some of, and some of that, um, the, where I, and there's energy healing, like all kinds of that. Right. I really, um, tackle it from the nervous system perspective and let's like, let's, let's actually like get back, learn how to feel your feelings and learn how to also be in your body and feel safe enough to feel your feelings. So, so that is really where I work with my clients and give them tools to one, start just reconnecting the mind and body, but also just start to learn how to be in your body and actually like, not like be thinking about a million other things. Yeah. So some of those tools to do that. And then we move on to once you're starting to feel safe in your body, like, well, you need to actually like, we actually need to feel our feelings. We've never were taught how to feel our feelings. Right. I don't, most of us aren't. And so like, let's actually feel those feelings and learn how to process them. Like whether it's in the moment or coming back to it later or whatever, because those feelings and the emotions as they get stored in our body, they, they take up energy in our body if we're not. And they, that's where the trauma sets in and we adapt for the trauma and all of that. But I'm all about like, let's like start regulating our nervous system, what that actually means. And yeah. then from there healing and being safe to be in our bodies, but also emotionally process um, things that come our way too. I mean, this is my favorite thing to discuss with anyone in the whole wide world. I'm so endlessly fascinated by the human body, the human brain. I mean, we are incredibly complex machines (laughs) and there's so much like there's, I, and I'm also just like, could be a lifelong student as 
a career plan like that would just make me the happiest person. Uh, But I completely agree. We're not taught. I was not taught how to feel my emotions fully on the contrary. I think it was more about like, how do you always have fake emotions? Uh, You know, like don't have an outburst. Don't be upset. Don't cry. Don't yell. Don't be frustrated. Don't be depressed. Uh, and then it was like, just make sure you put on a smile or like you give your aunt a hug, like what it just all that, like stuff that I feel like was so common for people growing up in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All and of that. so you learn all you're actually taught is how to not be authentic, how to not feel your feelings and how to really be separate from your body because your body is telling you that it feels one way and you're being told that that's wrong and you should feel something that you don't. And I didn't really realize until I started doing like yoga, breath work specifically, but that was more recent, like in the last 10 years, maybe. Um, Thank God I lived in a town that had donation-based yoga classes when I was a teenager. So I actually started practicing when I was like 14 or 15. And it was so wonderful to have a connection to my physical body. Uh, And then, you know, a lot of work that happened from between there and now. But even in a yoga class, like where you'll be in a pose and then you're like, you want to laugh or cry or you have like a wave and you're like, what is going on? Yeah, but that's all normal. That's your body releasing whatever it needs to release in that moment. Our, our, Like you said, our our minds and our bodies are so complex, but our bodies are so freaking smart. They're so designed very well. Yeah. And and they adapt based on like, what's going to keep us safe. Right. And so when we're told things like don't cry or don't be upset or whatever, like, especially when we're younger, our body's just adapting for survival reasons. And then that carries into our adulthood. And so of course we're walking around suppressing emotions and not being our true, like authentic selves Yeah, playing small or whatever it is. Right. So I think one of the biggest bummers for me about working in the corporate world, which I loved. I love competition. I love like climbing a corporate ladder. <laughs> I love I love having coworkers. I love collaboration across teams, all that stuff. And I was fortunate to always be uh, in a leadership position in like operations or customer service, like something that is very cross, um, cross collaborative. Right. And so I had a lot of fun with that career, but there was never discussion about personal growth or the connection between like your ability as a leader being connected to like who you are as a person and your individual growth. Uh, And I think just at that time, it wasn't an area of focus, but it's one of my favorite things about switching over to the entrepreneurial community where almost everyone I meet is like doing something to further their own knowledge, their own development, uh, the awareness of like strengths, weaknesses, where you need support, asking for support. Like it just feels so much more accessible now. You have to, and you're as a business owner. I mean, I think it's yeah. like, you know, like one of my mentors always says is like, your, your great, your business is your greatest spiritual teacher. Right. Oh yeah. And it's so <laughs> true. And I wish that stuff was um, and it's, it's starting to become more and more mainstream, but I wish that stuff was like shared in the corporate world too, because it's true there too, yeah. right? You said to Absolutely. be, you need to be in touch with yourself and who you are and, and to be able to like model that out for other people too. So. Yeah. So I love what you're offering to women in business. I think it's so special. Um, and you, so you work with people one-on-one, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I work with people one-on-one typically in a six month container. Sometimes I'll do three month containers, but I really like six months because it's, it's spacious. It's for this deep work that we're doing. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes, you know, people renew whatever, but, um, and then I also recently started doing last year, which I'm also in love with is, um, an eight week group program for, love. for people to get, like, start getting a taste of like, this is what it truly means to be unlocked and to start like living authentically and aligned with yourself and being more in your body and being more aware of everything. And so um, that has just been so fun for me to do. And it's just also, as we were talking earlier, before we started recording is like having that community is, and that's been a big part of my own growth, having that community and having people and seeing that, oh, hey, like 
other people are going through similar stuff too, or having the same thoughts that I'm having or whatever has just been so invaluable. And so it's, it's a program that I'm continuing to do and um, actually starting a new program, a new cohort of it in the middle of February. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That's, I mean, such a great time for, it's always a great time, but I particularly love group work because one, I mean, the people that you meet are like-minded right. um, and most of them come from different backgrounds, you know, different areas of expertise and they're struggling with different things or they're in different places in their career. And I love all of that. Uh, it's always so beneficial, I think, to have other women's perspectives and feedback. And also it can be a little bit intimidating to go right into individual deep work. And so it feels like, especially if someone's maybe like not done anything like this before, or they're worried about the investment and they kind of just want to test it out. I love group work for that too, because it's so, um, I don't like casual is not the right word, but it's, it's less, less intimidating. intimidating. Yeah. There is something, yeah, it is less intimidating doing with other people. And, and I think it puts you know, you're, you get to choose how you show up in that group too, right? Like yeah. in one-on-one, it's a little bit different. So yeah. you get to test it out and see. Um, I get and that all the time. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I've done a lot of, a lot of different groups because again, love being a lifelong learner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I think it's also really special to see that where I might be struggling, other women are thriving in this area and vice versa. So everybody kind of gets to have this feeling of, oh, wait, like, why are you having a hard time with that? That's so easy for me. Or like that comes so naturally to me. So it's like a natural little self-confidence boost, uh, which I think also makes it easier to be more vulnerable about where you do need help uh, because there's such a balance between the people in the groups that just happens naturally. I mean, that's the way of the world. There's always going to be someone who is better or less talented um, than you in whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. We like we all get to learn from each other. And even me as a facilitator, I get to learn from all the women in the group too, right? But we all get yeah. to learn from each other. And and it's so, um, I've done a few of these groups now. And of course I've been in, like you, I'm a lifelong learner. I've been in so many groups. Uh, I think the people who come together in the group always it, it, it does seem to be like the perfect compilation of people or whatever, uh, yeah. kind of work, but like, it just seems like, cool. Yeah. This is, this was how it was meant to be. And these people are here all here for a reason. So, so fun. So that's start. Right. It's eight weeks and it starts in February. Yeah. Eight weeks. Cool. It'll start in the middle of February. I will start um, promoting it soon on my socials and, and my website and all of that too. So um so yeah, that is to come. Mm-hmm. And I I do have a name for it now too. Um, I've been going without a name for it for a little bit, <laughs> just like eight week group program. But now I'm going to call it Unlocked. That kind of came to me earlier this Ooh. year. So, That's uh, fun. What a great word. Yeah. I, yeah. I love it. Um, I finally finished a book I was reading that was actually called Unlocked. And I was like, ah, this is perfect for my group. And it's exactly yeah. what it is, So I love when that happened. There's just like the absolute perfect word that describes it. Um, uh, we had a girlfriend come over, over the holidays and she was contemplating going to Rome by herself just for like an indefinite amount of time. Uh, she's like, has a job where she can work from wherever and had never been there. And, and my husband asked her why, and she just looked at him and she's like, you know, I just need a little bit of an untangling. <laughs> like oh, That is such a beautiful word. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, do like, I need an untangling? That sounds lovely. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, can I, can I make this happen? Like, yeah. Going? I don't think I can, but uh, yeah, I just I, love the concept and it was so descriptive, you know, I was like, okay, wonderful. I hope you have a wonderful and un- untangling. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. It did. Like so no, no more explanation needed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about, cause I think this is such a cool resource for our listeners. Um, you had shared with us in a different group setting, mm-hmm. your goal setting worksheet, which I thought was so beautiful and very aligned with, 
kind of how my husband and I have been talking about our goals over the last few years. Uh, but maybe you could kind of give us the highlights of that so that if anybody is wanting to set a new intention for this year or focus on something, um, they know that this is a resource for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yes, my like annual planning and goal setting guide that I have is nine steps to just one reflecting on the year prior and then looking forward to setting your intentions, your visions, your goals for, for the year ahead. And how I do it is, is, is in a, maybe in a more intuitive way than some uh, others may do it. And it's just something that's worked for me and I like it. And if you need to add in more like structure or more what I call like left brain, left hemisphere type organizational stuff in it, feel free to do it. Um, but it also has some of that organically built in too. Uh, but I also just, um, yeah, our lives and our careers and our businesses, whatever it is, like all overlap. So I like to look at it from both a personal and professional perspective. Um, and then uh, I think one of the things I say to everybody before going into this is just go through this exercise with compassion and love for yourself and do it in a way that works for you, right? In terms of like, it may be over several sittings, it may be over one like chunk of time, but do it in a way that really works for you and your lifestyle. Um, and so with that, I think the first step is really just setting a, an initial container for it and finding like, cool, where, what can I do? Like, for example, for me, like on New Year's Day, I went to a coffee shop by myself for a few hours and it was, it was, well, it's a coffee shop and a bookstore. So for me, that's like just so fun and I nerd mm -hmm. out. And so I'm like, this is fine. This is cool. And it was like, lots of people were there. And so it was just very inspirational and inspiring. And so I set up there for a couple of hours and did it. Um, and then I'll continue to do it over the next like few weeks. Cause, um, it's a lot to go through sometimes, like, especially when yeah. you're reflecting back. Um, and so that's like the first step I say is like set that container for it. And again, like it may have to be over several different settings. Mine certainly will be. Um, and then after that is really what I'm super key on. And I feel like is probably some of the most important or one of the most important steps is taking a look back and reflecting on the year prior, reflecting on 2023 and really looking at like, what do you want to remember about 2023? What, um, what did you accomplish? What were some of your top 10 moments? What um, are you most proud of and why? And, and then of course, going into the things like what worked, what didn't work again with compassion and no judgment on yourself. Um, but really like just taking a look back at the year prior, because I don't think we do that enough. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I mean, there's books and research written about it, how like instrumental looking back and seeing how far you've come is so key to your growth and your success moving forward, as well as your happiness and fulfillment and all of that. Right. Yeah. So taking a look back and then celebrating, like doing something for yourself to actually like celebrate, like, cool. I celebrated that or I did all this and I want to also acknowledge and honor it too. Um, and then, so that's that. And then the other steps that I think are important, and I know one of them that you're really keen on is, is looking at your core values and like, yeah. whether it's revisiting them or doing them for the first time, like, let's look at our core values and see where we're at with them in terms of like what 2023 looked like or the year prior looked like, and then what how that's going to play into what we want to get up to in 2024. Um, yeah. I core values was such a game changer for me when I was actually exposed to them. And it wasn't probably until my mid thirties that I even knew what they were um, or had somebody like set me down and be like, Hey, let's like do them because that's, what's going to like inform the next phase of your life. And um, I was just like, what? Like it was just an eye opener to me. And it was like, at that point in my life, when I identified what my core values were, it was like a no wonder that it just connected the dots for me that, that corporate America wasn't working for me. Right. Yeah. I wasn't able, I wasn't 
getting what I wanted out of life at that point in corporate America and what was important to me in terms of like what my actual values were. And so of course, because I was not living in alignment with them, there was like a lot of uh, dissonance going on. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, agree. I love doing values work. Um, I have, there's so many different ways you can do it. And I feel like anyone listening can Google core right. value worksheet or something. Um, we carry a values deck in our shop, uh, which actually came from our last conversation when I was like, why don't I carry these? I talk to everyone about them. <laughs> yeah. So now we do. Yeah. Uh, and I'm hosting a workshop on the 20th of this month. Um, that's very much aligned with this topic. It's all just about intentional goal setting. Uh, but the focus is specifically on figuring out what your core values are so that you can align your goals with those. Uh, because otherwise, how are you living in alignment? You know, you could do, you're just going to be productive randomly on one hand and then either not living up to your values or like struggling to find a way to feel fulfilled in that area of your life. Um, uh, and what I've noticed through doing this work, I think I shared with you, I'll do the core values and I take a photo of what I end at, like, what are my top five values? Yeah. And so now I have years worth of history of seeing, and like, some of them will swap out. Yeah. And they it's cha- totally, your core values change. yeah, it totally changes because it's based on where you are at that point in your life. And so if you're struggling financially and you're just starting up a business, maybe stability is extremely important to you. Um, And then at another point in your life, you might swap stability out for spontaneity or creativity, like something that's totally different because your needs are different. Yeah. And so I think that's really fascinating too. And it's a wonderful exercise to do with your partner or uh, your kids if they're old enough to understand the concept it's really fun. You know, I keep them on our coffee table because when girlfriends come over they get, so they're like, I want to do it again. And I want to see how mine have changed. I'm now like the keeper of other people's values. (laughs) I love that. Yeah. I have a workbook that is part of the, um, my one-on-one program that I take my clients through. There's a work, there's a whole like workbook and core values guide that I um, have my clients do. And a lot of times they'll like do it and be like, I want to do this with my partner or whatever. And I'm like, dude, do it. One, it's a great like conversation to be having regardless, but it's just, it's also like a really way to get aligned with like each other and, and to learn more about each other, obviously, but. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I think this is, I mean, it's a tool that can be used for so many purposes, but in marriage discussions, particularly, um, or even business partners, like you could have wildly different core values as business partners. And then how would you align your goals without that understanding of where your partner is coming from? I remember the first time Chad and I did this exercise together, we were struggling because I was trying to start a business and he was coming from a place of decades of stability in his career. And so his values ended up being like pleasure, joy, intimacy. Like it was all about fun from my perspective. And mine were like perseverance, commitment. (laughs) There was no fun. Like I was having zero joy in my core values. And he was like, why are you not like, you know, you're so in your head and you're not like enjoying life. And I was like, I'm focused. (laughs) I don't have time for all of this. I'm starting a business from scratch. Uh, But it was really eye-opening for both of us because it was frustrating before. If it's like one person is like, why are you working so much? Or why are you doing this? Or let's just go like goof off and have fun. And it's like, why do you not understand that yeah. like, I'm so passionate about this and I'm the only one who can get it off the ground, like get on board, pal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And so it, it was wonderful for that conversation to start, which was yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Corval. Yeah. Again, they were just such a game changer for me when I was introduced. So, but yeah, yeah. Cool. Why is this, so- like, how is it not something that our kids are learning in like middle school? <laughs> I agreed. Like so much of this stuff that I learned again, not until like my mid thirties, probably yeah. I'm like, why wasn't I t-? like this whole conversation around feeling our feelings? Like, like why core values? Why isn't this stuff taught in like such young, uh, like a much younger age? Um, I, yeah, I say that a lot and it's been kind of part of my mission to, well, 
one of my longer term goals is to like, let's figure out how to get some of this stuff to people earlier in their lives. Oh, yeah. And there's so many, um, I just love how, and maybe it's like, it feels more mainstream to me because this is the information that I seek out. So it's like what I see in all the algorithms that control my media focus. Uh, But looking at things like human design and Enneagrams and personality tests and like, what's your brain chemistry? Like there's no end now to the ways that we can learn more about like how we innately function. I just did a brain quiz this morning because I was like, sure, I have one minute to take this survey. Uh, <laughs> when was it? Or do you remember? The brain, I feel like it was like brain chemistry and my result was an alchemist. You can be like an alchemist or an oracle or two other things. I don't know. I didn't have time to do any further about. deep dive beyond that. <laughs> it's one I haven't heard about. So I'm like, oh. um, yeah, but in learning like my own human design, for example, it was like, man, if parents had this information when their children are born, then how much easier would it be to parent your child? Like just at least in the background, having a fundamental understanding of how your child expounds energy, you know, or like, are they, and even like coming down to the very, very basics, like, are they introverted or extroverted? Like, where are they feeling safe? What do they need to recharge their own little beings? Uh, All of that would have been, I feel like I would have gotten along a lot better with my mom if we had had that mutual understanding during my formative years. (laughs) Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I, yeah, like, like you said, just even the aware, like, the awareness of it yeah you don't even go do anything really with it like the subconscious awareness of it like is so it is can be valuable so yeah but yeah. instead I feel like we talk about parenting in such um broad terms of like two-year-olds are terrible five-year-olds are this you know right. girls are horrible at this time in their life and boys are <laughs> this it's like right. that doesn't fit for I mean, everyone wild. and like yeah all the things right yeah But it's like, I have an autistic daughter who's also transgender and was not diagnosed with autism until she was in her 20s. That's a very different parenting vibe from we have a 15 year old, you know, boy who's like playing football and is very like organized and like has his shit together. He just does everything that is expected of him. And there's no struggles in that area. That's just how his brain works. And then we have a 13 year old who's like way more creative, way more emotional. And like, he has emotional ups and downs and like needs more quiet time. And you can like see his little body gets like all vibrating when he's like overstimulated. It's like, they're all different human beings and there is not one way to parent all three of them. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, they're each going to have a different, well, they all have different styles. So of course you're going to have to bring into a different parenting style with all of them. Yeah. Yeah. We so. generalize so much, so much in our world. That is for sure. So much. Uh, this is why I'm fascinated by humans and all the ways that we can discuss them and learn about them. And <laughs> yeah. Well, cause like you said earlier, like it's a just, I, I am a huge believer. Like we're always learning about ourselves and others and we just get to keep doing that and that fascinates me and like excites me with maybe yeah. weird but like super cool we just get to continue to learn about ourselves and how we operate and all of that and that is a good thing right we get to it's a great thing yeah and the more and more we do that that's I, again like what I was saying earlier that's what's going to lead to us feeling more fulfilled and happier and more successful and all that so yeah yeah But I also feel like that is the first phase of it is how you yourself change, but it goes so much farther because when you have a solid understanding of your own needs and your own emotions, you also now have compassion for other people and how they experience the world. And well, ideally, maybe I guess I can't say across the board that happens for everyone, but my experience of that is the more you understand how your own brain and emotions and body function um, and what your struggles are, 
it gives you empathy for other people and what they're going through, or at least the understanding that not everyone has an identical experience of the world. Yeah. Yeah. That that's one of the biggest things I think I took away when I started um, learning more about the nervous system regulation and healing work. And is that once I started to understand like, oh, everybody is walking most everybody is walking around with an unregulated nervous system and all of these emotions going through our bodies and all all of the things and different experiences of course and so as i started to see that for myself and go through it myself and experience those changes it like you said i just had much more compassion for much more compassion for my husband much more compassion for the other people around me it just um it changed. And so I was like, I, this is why I have to incorporate some of this into like what I coach, because like, again, I think it's another thing that's going to help change the world. The more compassion and kindness we have for each other, like, of course, that's going to create a better world. Yeah. So. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, um, do you have, so you've started your goal setting process for this year. Yeah. Is there like one word or phrase that you would say is like your biggest focus for this coming year or wherever you are in your life right now? Yeah. So I was thinking about this and I haven't, I, I typically do pick a word or two. Um, and the one that, and I, so I haven't like picked my like two or three that I typically like, but one that came to me earlier this well, earlier this year, so within the last week or so, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> yeah, like yesterday, um, <laughs> was magical and enchanted, oh, and beautiful. Yeah. You're gonna have a beautiful year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's amazing, and just like, and and it, it extends out into like what I want to, you know, what I'm working on my clients and what I want to create in this world, but just like one, yes, it starts with ourselves and just being enchanted with our own selves and our own lives. And then also helping others do that and learn how to do that. And, um, and looking at, and the, with magical, it's like finding the magic in every single day, right? Like there's so many magical things that are happening in our lives every single day. I guarantee you, yeah. like that's just the norm. And we, we think it's like, not, but it is just the norm. And if we actually start to look for it, um, we'll see it more and we'll be like, oh, that's fucking cool that that just happened or how wondrous that is that it happened or yeah. whatever. Right. So, um, so yes, I'm excited about those words. Um, and it's just, yeah, they're just also really fun words to play around with and, and explore. Yeah. I mean, immediately the feeling that that conjured in me was like fun, playful, joyful, like all yeah. positive yeah. things that just sort of carry like a childlike joy with them. You know, it's so pure. Uh, I love, I love that. That's so cool. I think one of my favorite things about my mom growing up, well, even now she still has it, but she would find pure magic in everything. Like she would be peeling a carrot and stop you and be like, come look at this beautiful carrot, like this color, smell it, like really take it in. And we're like, okay, crazy lady, it's a carrot. <laughs> but now I totally do the same thing. I'm like, no, like, are you experiencing this though? Like, do you feel it in your soul? How beautiful this yeah. like plate of food is or like the plate itself or the sky I mean there's no shortage of wonderful beautiful magical things got to you. around us yeah, yeah. all of it yeah. Um, and it's a shame because we're so bombarded by mostly horribly negative news that it's very easy to start to think that that's the way of the world right uh, but I love the focus on shifting your mindset to looking for the magic yeah yeah, because it's, I mean, it really is all around us. Of course, shitty things happen, but so do good things, right? Yeah, so. and sometimes those shitty things are what leads us to the best thing. Yeah, yeah, that was a big learning for me last year. Um, Because the 2023 did not go how I wanted it to go, but it also, um, one, it deepened my own uh, self-trust with myself, but also I was able to understand because of all this work that I've done on myself, but also understand and be grateful for everything that did happen because it created some really freaking cool things. The new 
group program that I'm like talking about, it created that. It forced me to get creative in different ways and like so many other things, right? Um, that helped me change. But like, uh, yeah, sometimes, like you said, sometimes the shitty things lead to the good stuff and we get to find the good stuff in the shitty stuff. Yeah. And then the mundane and then the everyday, all the things, right. all the things. There's right. magic everywhere. There is, yes, for sure. Oh, that's so fun. Um, how, what's the best way for people to learn more about what you're doing or sign up for the eight week course if they're interested or just kind of follow along with your journey? Yeah. So Instagram, best way to do that. Well, Instagram and my website. So Instagram, I'm coach Ashley Del Bello. So Ashley is A-S-H-L-E-Y Del Bello, D-E-L-B-E-L-L-O. And then my website, ashleydelbello.com. Awesome. Um, so easy. Yeah, super easy. And then um, the planning, I'll send, you know, the planning guide and all of that, the step-by-step -step planning guide. Um, like you said, you'll link it in your show, show notes and that'll yeah. also be in, I'll put that on Instagram as well, as well to sign up for that in my bio. So fun. Um, I love chatting with you. I hope I get to see you in person again very soon. Awesome. Uh, and thank you so much for being the first guest of this magical year. Yay. Thank you for having me, Elsa. Of course. Happy new year. I'll talk to you soon.